Hi mga kakordates, it's me, Sir Yong, and welcome to my channel. And for today's video, it is requested by Sir Daniel Rojo from Agusan del Sur National High School. Hi Sir! So for today's topic, we are going to discuss the intertidal zone. Shout out kay Sir Arne Kenan Toralba Nuto. Hi Sir! Kay Sir Jeffrey Alupit. Hi Sir! And of course, kay Algren, kay Melanie, kay Clarissa, and Charles. Hi mga boss! Intertidal zone or also known as the littoral zone or as the foreshore or seashore. So, intertidal zone is an area that is constantly changing as the water moves in and out with the tides. Thus, organisms inhabiting in this area have a variety of adaptations that allow them to survive. So, na-mention po natin kanina ang adaptations. Now, meron po tayong tinatawag na tidal zone adaptation. Tidal habitats change daily with the tides. So, organisms adopt or adjust to changing environmental conditions with special features such as First is avoid drying out. So, example po nito is the limpets shape their shells to fit a specific rock. So, effective po siya to seal, um, to, seal? <laughs> to seal against a water loss. Second is to anchor themselves to resist waves. For example, here is the tube feet of a sea star used for locomotion, suction, or anchorage. Uh, para hindi sila madala ng alon, so kailangan nilang humawak. So, ka nga, sabi nila, kapit like a tarsier. Hmm. Last adaptation is to protect themselves against the predators. An so, example of it is the hermit crab hiding in its scavenged shell. So, kailangan po nilang magtago para hindi sila makain ng kanilang predators. Another example is the pipe fish will camouflage in the eelgrass bed. So, let's proceed now to the types of tidal habitats. Different tidal habitats require different adaptation. For example, the sandy beaches and the mud floods. Substrate offer lots of nutrients but little in this area. <laughs> Substrate offer lots of nutrients but little in this area. Animals bury themselves in mud and can also attach to the plants. Second tidal habitat is the rocky shores little protection from the strong waves so the animals must anchor. Complex tide pools are possible and seaweeds offer protection from drying. Tidal habitats are divided into zones based on relative beach location and how often they are covered by water. So the following subzones are spray zone, Upper intertidal zone, middle intertidal zone, and the lower intertidal zone. Now remember, zones affected daily by changing tides. So alam naman natin na yung tides are controlled by the moon's gravity on the ocean. So the adaptations are required to avoid drying out, wave action, and predation or predators. So, isa-isahin na natin ngayon ang subzone ng intertidal zone. First is the spray zone or the supralittoral zone. It is the highest zone of true marine life. It is usually only kept damp through the wave splash. So, organisms exposed to the air here must be able to prevent desiccation or drying out because the spray zone is out of water most of the time. So, the species must tolerate salt, heat, cold, and extended dry periods. So, the adaptation example of this zone are the barnacles and the RLJ. So, there are 
the most tolerant to desiccation or to drying out. So, may may have a protective covering such as shell. So, ang example ng organisms na makikita dito are the lichens, the isopods, the blue-green algae, the periwinkle, and the amphipods. Second zone is the upper intertidal zone. So, it is only covered by water at high tide. Of course, increased wave action. So, the tide pools provide some protection. So, the adaptation in this zone include the ability to survive, exposure to air without drying out, and to survive wave action. So, the adaptation example in this zone are the sea anemones survive wave action by attaching themselves to the sheltered side of a large rock. So, ang example po ng mga animals na makikita sa upper intertidal zones are limpets, anemones, acorn barnacles, shore crab, black turban snails, hermit crab, and rockweed. The third zone is the middle intertidal zone. It is regularly covered by water, so the seaweed is pro more prominent in this zone. It is the most dynamic zone. It is covered and uncovered twice per day as the tide comes in and out. Life in this zone must tolerate both exposure to air and complete submission. The adaptation example of the middle intertidal zone is the tube feet of the ochre sea star allow it to suction onto the surface. So the example of the animals that are found in the middle intertidal zones are gooseneck barnacles, California mussels, Black leather chitons, anemones, ochre sea star, and sea palms. The last zone is the lower intertidal zone or the subtide zone. It is the most diversity of organisms compared to the other zones. Less exposure to the air and heat underwater for a lot of the time. So animals are unable to exist in the other zone because they will dry out. Anemones have a tentacles that inject a paralyzing neurotoxin. When touch is an adaptation example of the lower intertidal zone. So, ang mga animals na makikita dito are the gumbo chiton, the nudie branch or the sea slug, wool kelp and the kelp crops, purple sea urchin, coralline algae, the giant green sea anemones. So, yun po ang intertidal zones. Animals inhabiting the intertidal zone may be restricted as to when they can feed. Many seal animals are filter feeders. Ibig sabihin, they feed on planktonic material in the water and thus are unable to feed when they tide is out. To those animals that are not filter feeders, they also be restricted as they seek shelter from the element and predators at the low tide. In addition to the environmental challenges that organisms inhabiting to the intertidal zone, so one of the greatest threat is the humans. We cause damage to this environment as we step on organisms and their habitats and remove organisms altogether. And that it's all about the intertidal zone. You can watch also my other video which is the ecosystem and the estuaries in order for you to really understand this topic. I hope you've learned a lot on this video and if you like this video, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for the updates. Goodbye mga 4 dates and see you sa ating next vlog.